mining a little bit by accident and probably that's the, the 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 story of many of our careers isn't it i actually joined the linus board um a, a, a colleague of mine said that you know gee wasn't this a great company it had uh uh, rare earths were absolutely essential to current and future facing industries. Um, it, it was really a, a, a somewhat mature startup, but still, you know, um, really just in the process of ramping up its production capability and uh, and that it had the foundations for an excellent business because of the Mount Weld ore body, which is recognised as one of the finest in the world. Um, after I joined the board, interestingly enough, it was uh, became very apparent uh, very quickly that there were really serious issues with the uh, with the business. And at that time, I had to make a decision on whether I resigned from the board or whether I uh, continued, to, you know, put my hand up to be part of the solution. Um, uh, I, I put my hand up to be part of the solution. Uh, I, I put my hand as a result was appointed as CEO. And that was back mid 2014. And so in the now almost seven years since then, we've had um, an excellent, uh, although at times uh, almost hair raising uh, roller coaster ride as we have uh, ramped the business up to full production and um, taken it from being a startup to now uh, being an ASX 100 company. Oh, just do it. Um, yeah, it's actually a great industry and uh, I know that sometimes people will look at things and you know, every generation tends to have its top dog sort of um, jobs. And in the 50s, I think it was accounting, and in the 60s, it was engineering. And, you know, then in the 70s and 80s, it was probably marketing. And and and, and then we got into sort of some of the online and, and uh, digital sorts of roles. And so sometimes people looking at m minerals and mining will think, Oh, you know, it's it, it's uh, you know a very it's a very physical role. You actually have to attend, you know, the workplace and do all of those sorts of things. But gosh, without minerals and mining, we would be unable to enjoy the lifestyles that we love in the 21st century. It offers terrific opportunities, and for women in particular, every mining company that I know is looking to increase its gender diversity. And so, you know, the opportunities, if you um, want to be in this industry, are really significant. I often get frustrated when I hear people say, gosh, it's hard and we put out, you know, these ads and we don't get any women um, uh, applicants um, because the ways to attract and retain women are well known and have been proven by any number of different um, uh, research methodologies. And these are the things, these tried and trusted strategies are the things that we um, use in our business. The first is track gender diversity in your workforce. Um, it's an old saying, but it's as true today as it ever has been. You will not manage something if you do not measure it. And so be alert to the issue of, of, of gender diversity in the workforce. Make sure when you're recruiting that your roles are, uh, that, that, that your ads uh, make it very clear that you welcome diversity and not just gender diversity, but diversity in all of its other facets. For example, within our business, diversity is one of our five key values. Um, and that, and, and if you don't get any women applying, 
have a look at what you've done in your recruitment strategy in terms of how you've advertised, where you've advertised, uh, what you've said about it, and go back and try again. Um, a, a living example of this in our business is that we were recruiting um, three principal chemists. I was told we had no women applicants. I said, well, keep going until you do get some. And uh, we did. And it was quite funny in that instance because we got an excellent female applicant turned out that her husband was also a, a chemist and was very happy to come to Malaysia and uh, take on one of the other roles. So we got two for the price of one, which was excellent. But then once we've attracted them, how do we retain them? It is really important um, that you don't just say, well, now we've got women, we'll just let them out there to give it their best shot. And then, oh, if they don't succeed, well, that'll just prove that this was the wrong place for women, won't it? Um, that's not good enough. So we introduced better onboarding and integration of our female team members into our plant. We certainly provide them with on-the-job support and um, uh, coaching and mentoring from senior women managers. We make sure that where we have women working on shift crews, that we have at least two on any shift crew because it's always nice to have a buddy. And of course, um, we, we're very focused on the next generation of women. So we spend a lot of time actually at universities and uh, other school, you know, schools to attract the next group of women graduates into Linus. On a very practical basis, we also introduced a new maternity leave policy, which gives our women the opportunity to come back to work part time as they're re entering the workforce. And then um, after a couple of months, in that they have the opportunity to either elect to remain part time or to return to a full time role. We, uh, the issue of being alert to the opportunities and having a proper talent management system is probably the most important thing. For example, when I first joined Linus, I found what you will find in companies all over the world, which is women underemployed for their qualifications or capabilities. In this instance, we had a qualified uh, chemical engineer working and not much more than an administrative role. So we gave her the opportunity to be our first ever uh, female shift supervisor. She's uh, turned out, um, we had to carefully manage this, the, the transition to be one of our very best performers. She's now working as a process engineer and is one of our key leaders in the future. Um, so uh, you don't win this just with one case. But the point of really understanding what the talent is in your organisation and understanding that it won't necessarily be showing in, you know, sort of a direct line because, you know, unconscious bias starts very early. I'm actually a big fan of um, targets and now also quotas. Uh, when I, and, and I'm guessing that some of the women who will look at this will be young women who will say, oh, but life has moved on in the 21st century, everything will be okay. And I can tell you when I was 25, I also thought life had moved on and everything will be okay. So long as I work hard and I contribute and I'm a, a valued member of the workforce, then the promotions will come. And I was asked to be on a committee when I was a very young woman uh, as part of the first mandatory reporting required under the affirmative action legislation in Australia. And, um, you know, I thought at the time, gee, why do, why do we need to do this? It was an eye opener for me. I was working in, I was working actually in marketing at time at the time, but, you know, as a knowledge worker, I had, um, as part of that 
experience, I had exposure to women who were working in other areas, including factories in the company in which I was working, and understood that some of the challenges for them were significantly greater than the challenges that I was seeing. But unfortunately, after rather more years than I like to fess up to um, working, I have to tell you that um, I think that quotas will be the only thing that significantly shifts the dial. After all of these years, we still only have 10 female CEOs in the ASX 200. Um, the statistics don't lie. People like to tell you all sorts of reasons for why this is, but even if we accept that not that, that, that fewer women than men aspire to be CEOs, the statistics should be significantly ahead of that. So I think it won't shift until we have uh, quotas. When we look at the targets which have been introduced in the ASX for board appointments, we have seen an improvement in representation of women. And I think that we absolutely need to do the same thing in executive ranks because one of the unintended consequences of the improvement in non-executive director representation is that some women have actually left what I would see as, you know, sort of their prime years as, um, uh, as executives to actually take on um, uh, non-executive roles. So I think that we do need it. I think it's a very good thing. And I think that we should not only be focused on gender diversity. Um, diversity in all of its forms improves business performance because the more diverse your inputs, the richer and more creative your outputs are. fairly bloody minded. Um, so I was quite determined. Um, my children may even say stubborn, but I um, shy away from that um, adjective, but, but very determined to demonstrate that businesses can do better. They can be run better and more profitably and deliver better outcomes for the business and for the people in the business than some of the old models. So, so I guess what helped me build my career was having real purpose um, and really having um, a passion for delivering a better and different outcome. And my, my passion is about building achievement cultures where delivery is rewarded, where career progress is based on results, not gender or relationships, where the people in our business can come to work being confident that they are being treated equitably and they can focus on doing excellent work, not on promoting themselves or their achievements to management. Um, I hope by doing this and showing that we can deliver better outcomes, more businesses will be encouraged to adopt a similar approach. But I have also certainly benefited from the generous support of sponsors and mentors throughout my career. And I think that there is a strong um, and compelling case for pay it forward. And as a result, I mentor or have mentored um, well over 100 women and men during my career. Actually, the same advice I would give to young men. Uh, so any young person, and I'm hoping there are many who seek to join the mining sector, I would say firstly, choose your employer wisely. Um, if your employer's values are consistent with yours, you will be happier at work. If you are happier at work, you will perform better. And truly, uh, doing your due, due diligence on understanding the, the values of the workplace into which your um, 
proposing you know, that you're proposing to join is really important and the values are not what sits on posters on the wall or on screensavers the values are to be seen in what the performance uh, what the organization does and how it does it so talk to people who work for the company understand the difference between um work the design of the work or the design of the values and the values in operations. Um, secondly, make sure you do have the skills necessary to be successful in your role and don't underestimate your skills. This is a problem with a lot of women. There's a lot of research that says if men read a job description and they meet half the criteria, they say, oh, that's great, I'll give that a shot. And if women meet half the criteria, they say, I can't do that job. So really critically assess your skills and understand what you can bring to the role. It might not be that you tick every box on the um, job description, but, there, but, but really understand that there may be things that you bring to the role which are even greater than the ones which have necessarily been identified. But understand those skills and 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 make sure that you apply them because the more valuable you are to the business the better the outcomes for both parties um you know it's really important that you remember that it's not the job it's not the responsibility of your employer to manage your career or, or even your life choices but if you are valuable and a contributing team member then notwithstanding everything I said before about some of the issues with progression, you will find that most employers will provide you with great support. And thirdly, um, and this goes a little to what I was saying about the skills, be bold and own your own achievements. Men are so much better at this. They are so much better at claiming that whatever has been delivered has been delivered as a result of either their um, efforts or their intellectual input. Um, women are much more likely to actually bear a lot of the heavy load in, in, in many projects, but be passive and wait quietly to be recognised. So make sure that you do own your achievements. Um, you don't have to take out full page advertisements but don't assume that your hard work will be automatically recognised and rewarded. And even be alert that just occasionally some of your colleagues might be ready to step in and take credit for your work. So um, I guess as I, I sum those things up, I'm really saying choose to do something for which you can develop a passion and a purpose. Um, make sure that you have the skills to do the role and there are all sorts of ways to acquire those skills. And thirdly, be confident, be bold and make sure people do know the contribution that you're making to the business.